Hi, my name is Samir Desai, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to describe the titrations of polyprotic acids and bases. In earlier videos, you learned about the importance of titrations. If you recall, a titration is a quantitative method used to determine the unknown concentration of an acid or a base. In this graph of a titration curve, with a pH of 1 before equivalents of NaOH are added, indicates a strong acid. Titration is the slow addition of the known concentration, which is NaOH, or sodium hydroxide in this case, to determine the concentration of an unknown, the HCl, or hydrochloric acid. As equivalents of the known concentration are added, the one equivalent of H plus from HCl pairs with one equivalent of OH negative from NaOH until the equivalence point is reached. This is when the solution has been neutralized. While this titration curve is an example of a monoprotic acid, meaning the reaction produces one equivalent of H plus, Sometimes you'll have an unknown concentration of a solution that reacts to produce more than one equivalent of hydrogen or hydroxide ions. Poly for many, and protic referring to protons means many protons. You may already be familiar with some polyprotic acids since they pop up in chemistry all the time. Sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, carbonic acid are just a few. Each of these polyprotic acids reacts to produce more than one proton. Let's take a look at the dissociation of phosphoric acid, so H3PO4, in water, for example. We'd see a proton plus dihydrogen phosphate, the deprotonated form of H3PO4. But unlike a monoprotic acid, this dihydrogen phosphate can continue to dissociate, resulting in another proton and hydrogen phosphate. And once again, hydrogen phosphate will dissociate into proton and a phosphate ion. As seen by these three reactions, there are three equivalents of hydrogen ions produced, so there will be three equivalence points, Ka1, Ka2, and Ka3, where a strong base will react with each of the protons. The titration curve of the phosphoric acid would look like this, starting at an acidic pH and increasing in basicity as equivalents of a strong base are added. Each of the equivalence points can be seen at one, two, and three equivalents of a strong base. And a polybasic base follows the same concept as polyprotic acids. If acids can react to produce more than one equivalent of a hydrogen ion, then bases can react to produce multiple hydroxide ions. It is clear that calcium hydroxide can donate more than one hydroxide, so it's polybasic. But it may be tougher to recognize that a phosphate ion and carbonate ions are two examples of polybasic molecules that also have the capability to produce more than one equivalent of a hydroxide ion. You're probably wondering, how does something like that phosphate ion result in equivalents of hydroxide ions produced? Let's take a look. Keep in mind that ions don't naturally exist. They dissolve into an ionic form in solution. Something like trisodium phosphate, Na3PO4, when put into solution will produce three sodium ions and a phosphate ion. The sodium ion produced will not react so it can be ignored. The phosphate ion will react with water, and since bases are defined by Bronsted-Lowry as proton acceptors, then the ion will grab an electron from water, resulting in hydrogen phosphate plus a deprotonated water molecule, or the hydroxide ion. The hydrogen phosphate, which is still basic, can continue to accept protons from water, resulting in the following reaction, where dihydrogen phosphate and a second equivalent of OH negative is produced. Lastly, the dihydrogen phosphate accepts a proton from water, resulting in a third equivalent of hydroxide. Each reaction can be labeled Kb1, Kb2, Kb3, which means the titration curve would be similar to the polyprotic acid, but with the opposite trend, starting with a basic pH and ending at an acidic pH. As we can see, titrations of polyprotic acids and polybasic bases must have multiple equivalence points. Let's see if you can apply this information to a practice question. A student is titrating an unknown solution of sodium carbonate with a strong acid, HCl. A is asking how many equivalence points the student will see in the titration. Recall that an equivalence point is where the moles of hydrogen ions will equal the moles of hydroxide ions, resulting in a neutralized solution. When Na2CO3 is put into solution, it will dissociate to produce two sodium ions and a carbonate ion. The sodium ion produced will not react, so it can be ignored. The carbonate will react with water to produce a hydroxide ion and bicarbonate. Remember that the carbonate ion is polybasic, so there is a second reaction where bicarbonate in water produces another hydroxide ion and carbonic acid. 
carbonic acid is no longer able to accept protons from water, so the end result is two equivalents of OH negative in two reactions, a KB1 and a KB2. So this solution will have two equivalence points. The next part, B, is asking to draw a graph of the titration curve when HCl is added to sodium bicarbonate. The carbonate ion is basic, not a very strong base, so the starting point will be a little bit below a pH of 14. Since there are two KBs, by the time a third equivalence of a strong acid is added, the pH at the end of the titration will be acidic, around 1. The graph will look like this, with a steep drop in pH at each of the two equivalence points. Well, there you have it. By this point, you should feel comfortable with the acid and base dissociation constants, be familiar with the relationship and trends between these two values, and be able to identify the strength and reactivity of an acid or base when given the dissociation constant. Make sure to follow up this lesson with some practice.